the soul, beautiful home, there we shall rest, never to roam, we are from all care, happy and bright, Jesus is there, he is the light off in the storm, lonely are we. I in the hall, longing for me, beautiful home of the ransom beside the crystal, crystal sea. Church, if you don't know, I know that there is victory in Christ Jesus. I, I, I want you to know that the victory has already uh, been won. Uh, Brother Hoover, if you don't mind, can you turn this on for me? I'm going to get rid of this. Brother uh, uh, Brother Smox is going to take this one. Are we on yet? Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, we're on. Yeah. So there is victory in Christ Jesus. The victory has the victory already been uh, won. Even though we fight uh, the battle, uh, and it seems fairly difficult sometimes, but we got to make sure that we keep our mind on the fact that the victory is already one. I'm so glad that I serve a uh, God that is so merciful, a God that is so graceful. And the reason why I'm saying this this morning is because I stand before you this morning. Brother Proctor, God woke me up this morning, and I'm so glad. That, that's just a hallelujah, amen, all by itself. Uh, you and I ought to be excited about the, about the fact that God woke us up this morning and gives us another opportunity to change something in our lives. He's given us another opportunity to right something that is wrong. He's giving me and you another opportunity to repent of a sin, to confess some kind of fault uh, that we have engaged ourselves in. And, and, and we do it to ourselves, might I add. I, I'm not ashamed to say that sometimes, uh, Brother Hagger, I do it to myself. I, I mess up me uh, by thinking me has a better idea in how to handle me. And me don't understand me like God understands me. And, and sometimes I just got to adjust my thought process, my thought pattern, and align it with the pattern of God. Uh, isn't that all right? So uh, we ought to just be so joyed at the fact that God just given us another day. Another day to tell somebody, hey, I love you. I, I want to tell you my wife is doing better. I, I want you to know that I, I don't understand it. Uh, uh, but these are bad times for her and for us. But I want you to know something that it has drawn us as close. I, I, I have, we are, Brother Proctor, we have grown so close. We have grown closer than I could have ever imagined of the conversations that we have. The talks uh, that, he, uh, that, we, uh, that we engage in are different. Uh, we are open. We are exposing. But you know what? It's all because we rely on God. It's all because we see that God loves us. And it's not us that leads us. It's God that wants to direct and lead our lives. And sometimes we want to step out in front of him. And that's not good to get in front of uh, Brother Boone just shaking his head. Don't do that. Don't get out in front of God. And I want you to know that don't get out in front of him. But Brother Raglan, we don't need to lag behind as well. Uh, we need to stay uh, right there with him right in a line, holding on to his hand, not being told to come on with me, not being told, get back here, you're, you're out there too much, you're going to get yourself hurt, get back under the security, get back up under the umbrella of my grace, my mercy, and my love. I'm so glad to be in the church, I don't know what to do. I'm so glad that I'm in the church that you can read about in the Bible. I'm so glad that I am in the church of Christ. I'm so glad that I'm in the body of Christ. I'm so glad that I'm in the church that Jesus Christ is coming back for. Amen. And you ought to be glad too. Amen. You ought to be glad too. Please continue to pray for my wife for the procedure went, went well and there is progress that has been made. Uh, obviously, there is still some pain involved in this. So uh, please do uh, pray for that. And uh, I know she's listening. I, I know she's watching right now. So uh, we, we just, just pray for her. Uh, look. This is the last time we're going to be together in 2018. Uh, the transition into 2019 is happening, and, and I want you to know it's going to happen uh, fairly quickly because 2018 just blew by. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I cannot believe how 
uh, short 2018 uh, was, but it tells me something. It gets me to uh, realize something that life is short. Life is short. Uh, James calls our lives a vapor. He said, what is your life that appeared for a moment and then vanished away? James, the fourth chapter, verse number 14. So that, that, that leads me to believe that there's a lot of work yet that I have to do in such a short time. There's a lot of work that you and I have to do, and we just got a short time to do it. We cannot be distracted. Uh, we cannot slip. Uh, we have to be engaged in kingdom building business because life is too short. Time just goes by. So, so listen, uh, as time is going by now, I want to get into our lesson this morning. Uh, turn your Bibles to the Old Testament again, Judges the uh, seven chapter, verse uh, number one uh, through seven. I won't read that again for time's sake so I can get into the lesson. Uh, Brother Smox is going to help me as we uh, go through some of the uh, verses in the, the book of Judges, Judges the sixth chapter and also Judges the seventh chapter. Uh, but uh, it read into your hearing this morning with Judges the seventh chapter, uh, verse number one through uh, seven. And the tag for this morning's lesson is, uh, with God a few uh, will do. This is part two. We began this lesson on uh, last Sunday. So with God, uh, a few will do. And I want, I want you to uh, take a real hard listen to this and why uh, the uh, tag for this lesson or the subject matter is titled, uh, with God a few uh, will do. And if you uh, look through the Bible, it, with God it's always a few. Uh, you know, you hear so much about those who are going uh, to be saved. I remember Brother Proctor telling to me uh, one day he was going to preach a sermon, and that sermon was going to be titled Two, Eight, Eight, Two, and a Few. That's what it was. Eight, uh, Two, and a Few. And I remember Brother Proctor uh, saying that I stole his sermon because I said Eight, uh, Two, and a, a, a Few. I, I didn't know. I just uh, uh, made a statement. And the eight were those who were going to be saved in Noah's days. You recall that in Genesis, the sixth chapter, uh, there were eight uh, souls that got into uh, the ark. And, and, and the Bible says in the seventh chapter of Genesis, and God shut them in. God shut the door to the ark, meaning there was nobody going in and there was nobody going, uh, going out or nobody coming into that ark if God shut the door. And the two uh, were those who... Uh, were amongst those that wandered in the wilderness for the 40 years. Uh, you remember, uh, Brother Boone, they wandered for 40 years, and everyone died with the exception of two. So you got eight that were saved in the ark. You got two that were saved that, that were going into the promised land, which was Joshua and Caleb. And then the Bible clearly says in uh, Matthew, the 22nd chapter, verse number 14, that there are many who are uh, called but only a few uh, uh, have, have, have will come. Uh, so eight, two, and a few. I, I want you to know that with God, a few uh, will do. So, so, so let, let me give it a quickly recap of what, what happened. We know uh, that God chose Gideon. Uh, we learned that uh, according to uh, Judges, the seventh chapter, verse number one, that Gideon's name uh, took on another phrase. It was Jerubbaal. And Jerubbaal meant that he was one that tore down altars, according to Judges, the sixth chapter, verse number 32. He tore down the groves. He tore down of the altar of Asherah, which was the god that they, Israel, the Israelite has worshipped with that time. And we learned that because of they worship of this god, God uh, sent them in to judgment. Uh, he sent them into being uh, persecuted. It, 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 there was heartache and heartbreak and pain and suffering. Uh, they were starving. The, uh, the Midianites would come for uh, seven years in a row and would des desolate their, uh, uh, their country, their, their, take their food, take their crop, their produce, take everything belong to them uh, to the point where we saw Gideon was doing something that was unusual. He was in a wine press. Uh, trying to do something that should have been on the top of a hill, which is winnowing uh, the wheat, and uh, which means to throw it up in the air and it would be separated. So uh, we knew that there was hard time 
that was happening with the children of Israel. And we learned that the hard times were brought on by who? The children of Israel. Uh, we learned that they were being persecuted, but the persecutors were not the ones that were at fault. It was the persecutees that brought on the persecution. Uh, come on now, relate to yourselves in life, put the mirror in front, Brother Boone, a mother mirror moment, for us to examine ourselves and see where we stand uh, with the almighty God. So, so here's what's going on. Now Gideon knows that he's been called by God uh, to uh, judge the children of Israel. It is time for the persecution to stop. It's time for the suffering to stop. It's time for the heartaches to stop. It's time for the heartbreak to stop. It's time for all the bad to stop. It's time for them to prosper. It's time for them to be happy. It's time for them to be good. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah the 29th chapter, verse number 11, he says, for God, I, he says, for I have a plan for you, declared the Lord. It's a plan for peace. Did you hear that? It's a plan for welfare, not a plan of evil, not a plan of calamity. And he said to give to you a future and a hope. The children of Israel were now looking into the future of the hope that God was now getting ready to supply for them. Isn't that all right? It's all right to believe in the future. It's all right to say uh, that uh, uh, there is hope when I'm in a desperate situa situation. I, 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 even though there is calamity, even though there's ruckus, there's rampus, there's chaos, there's confusion, there's discord, there's dissension, even when there's division, God still says there's hope. Keep looking toward the hope. And now the children of Israel were being, getting ready to being taken out of that situation. So here's what's going on. Gideon said, we need to get an army together because we got to fight. And you remember the Bible said in, in Judges, the sixth chapter, that uh, the Midianites were as numerous as the sand was on the shores, as numerous as locusts would that would come in and eat up the crop and take everything to the point where they were unable to count them. But I want you to know, God knew exactly how many it was. The Bible says it was 135,000 men that the children of Israel had to face. So, brother, smart to get for me, Judges, the sixth chapter, verse number 35. I want you to see something. I want you to see something. Uh, uh, that the Israelites were only 32,000. Am I right about that, brother Proctor? The Israelites only had 32,000. But here's what Gideon did. When the, when the Lord called on him, Gideon went to work and he sent out messengers. He sent messengers to Manasseh. He sent mess messengers to Ashner. He sent messengers to Zebulon. And he sent messenger messengers to Naphtali. Now watch why he did this. A brother Smart, read for me. Uh, 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 Judges the sixth chapter, verse number 35. Read. He sent messengers throughout Manasseh. Uh-huh. And they also were called together to follow him. That's right. Keep reading. And he sent messengers to Ashner, uh -huh. to Zebulon, to Zebulon, and to Naphtali. And, and to Naphtali. Naphtali. Now keep reading. And they came up to meet them. And they did what? They came up to meet him. All right. There you have it. They came up to meet them. Listen. Gideon was a judge. Brother Proctor, he was the leader. God chose him to judge the children of Israel. God chose Gideon to lead the children of Israel. But God never expected Gideon to fight the battle all by himself. <laughs> Come on now. We have taken the story uh, that was recorded over 3,000 years ago. And we're talking about it today in the 21st century. We're talking about Gideon. We're talking about an army that he was to fight of 135,000 people. An army that he was going to lead. An army that he was going to fight with. 32,000 people. 
32,000 soldiers. 32,000 soldiers against 32, against 135,000. Now listen to this. All throughout the, the book of uh, Judges, uh, uh, brother, a uh, smart read for me, uh, Judges, the seventh chapter, verse number uh, two. Pay attention to this. I want you to li listen to this. Read. Judges, the second chapter, Judges, the seventh chapter, verse number two. Read. The Lord said to Gideon. The Lord said to Gideon. The people who are with you are too many. The people who are with you are, are too, too many, many for me to give to Midian into their hands. Uh-huh. To give the Midian into your hand. Now, God's going to tell you the reason why a few uh, will do. So this is a very a simple a sermon for us. It, it's not real hard for us to understand the conclusion uh, of the matter of this message. Uh, why would God a few will do? Keep reading, uh, Brother Smart. For Israel will become too boastful. Okay, Israel, uh, y'all gonna get the big head. Y'all gonna think y'all somebody. Y'all gonna walk around with your chest stuck out. Uh, y'all gonna walk around as though you did something. Uh, you gonna be boasting about your greatness, how you were able to defend with this and, and with that. You know, I'm skilled in the right hand, but I'm skilled in my left hand at a sword as well. My eyes are so good that with a slingshot I can hit anybody. I'm, I'm masterful with a buckler or a shield. I can throw a spear 200 yards and hit a person square dead in the forehead. I'm that type of fella. I'm strong where I can take on 10 at a time. I I'm so strong that I can take on 20 at a time. My mind is so sharp that I'm able to outsmart those who think they are smarter than me. See, they became, they would become boastful. Uh, they would think that the reason they are who they are is because of them. I want you to know today that all of the glory, all of the glory, all of the glory, every bit of the glory belongs to God. Not to you, not to me, because you and I understand that everything that we do, every sense of being that we have comes from God. So, so you know the end of the sermon now. So the conclusion of the matter is, you know the conclusion of the reason why a few with God, why a few will do. Because uh, see, we get the big head. See, we won't, God wants to remind us that it's him and not you. So, so Brother Smart, uh, continue on reading in Judges, the seventh chapter, uh, verse number two. Saying, my own power has delivered uh -huh. me. Let's start over from the beginning so we'll, we'll, we'll keep that, that scripture in context. Read, read that again. The Lord said to Gideon. Uh-huh, he said this to Gideon. Read. The people who are with you are too many. Uh, they're too many. For me to give Median in uh -huh. into their hands. Keep reading. For Israel will become too boastful. Hey, get boastful. Read. Saying, my own power has delivered my me. My own power has delivered me out of this chaos. Now, what I want you to know is uh, how would you, what would you think if you were Gideon? You've been called to judge. You've been called to lead the children of Israel into battle. And, and, and you know you need uh, folks to battle with. Uh, so church said, uh, Gideon is the leader. I, I want you to understand he can't do it all by himself. So I, I want to bring us up, in, let's fast forward to the 21st century. D do you know the preacher can't do it by himself? Do you know the preacher cannot do it by himself? You know the preacher can't fight the battle by himself? So if kingdom building is going to take place, it requires all of us to be totally engaged in kingdom building business. Are you with me? So, so Gideon sent messengers, and all of them did what? They came. They came to assist in the battle. We're going to talk about that, though. I'm going to go to verse number three here in just a minute. But, uh, but let me point out something to you. When the Lord said, you got too many? You get in. And so your thoughts are, I'm getting ready to go into a battle of 135,000 men. 
and I've got 32,000. Probably not where I, I want to be, but if it's all I got, then I'm going to battle with that 32,000. God's thought, too many. Gideon's thought, not enough. God's thought, too many. Gideon's thought, not enough. Matter of fact, if Gideon, if you just do the math, if Gideon went to fight 135 with the 32,000 men, if I'm in the army, that means I have to handle 4.2 enemies. And not just handle them, I got to defeat them. I, I got to defeat them in some kind of way with my sword, my shield, my, my spear, my buckler, uh, uh, my slingshot. Some kind of way my bow and arrow has got to penetrate and, 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 and dismiss 4.2 men. Okay? You get, it's, so, so God, too many. Gideon's thoughts, not enough. So now we go to where God says, listen. Send them down. Those people, he said, send them down to uh, uh, the spring uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of harbor. The spring of harbor, which means trembling. And he said, all those who are afraid and trembling, tell them to go home. Tell them goodbye. Tell them, Brother Smith, they have an honorable discharge. We no longer need you. But see, I, I want you to understand why a few will do uh, with God. Is be, see, 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 God knows my heart. He knows your heart too. He knows everybody's heart. Although these 32,000 men were good, uh, they were probably true men. These were probably men who didn't have faith. They were not courageous men. These were men who were afraid and were trembling. Not that they're bad men. There's nothing wrong with them. Not that they're, 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 they're men that you, you, you just don't need around you. These were good men, true men. But yet these men lack faith. They lack character. They lack integrity. They lack commitment. They lack perseverance. These were men that would start a task and stop in the middle. These were men that left tasks uncompleted. Men that did not see God as the victor. You see what I'm saying? Men that were afraid. Men that said, why don't we do it this way? Men that were trembling in fear of what might happen. Men that did not know that the almighty God was in charge. So, now we're down to 10,000 men, Brother Proctor. So, you went from 32 to 10,000. Because remember, God said, let them go. God said, let, let them go. They're the ones that are trembling. They're the ones that are fearful. Those are the ones who are afraid. Those are the ones that don't realize that I'm in charge. Those are the ones that don't know that I lead. I'm going to fight the battle. Those are the ones that know I'm going to win the battle for them. So give them a dishonorable discharge. Just send them home back to their family. So now we're down to 10,000 men. Gideon's mind... His thought process, not enough. God's thought process, too many. Gideon, not enough. You just took 22,000 men from me, God. You want me to fight a battle? <laughs> not enough. God, too many. So take them down and allow them to drink out of the water and let me choose the men that will fight for you. Watch that. He said, let me choose the men that will fight with you. <laughs> so
So now, we get to 10,000 men, and if you do the math, 10,000 men, that now means, boom, you got to take on 13 and a half men. So of the 10,000, of the 135,000 that, that we are engaging in battle with, each one of us have to take out 13 and a half men. Gideon's saying, my thoughts, not enough. God is saying, my thoughts, too many. Why? I don't want you to be proud. I don't want you to be boastful. I don't want you to be high-minded and high-headed, thinking that it was something that you did. I don't want you to think that you ought to receive the glory. I want you to know that the glory is for me. It's for me. So now we have it. 300 men. See, this is the real 300. Yeah, Hollywood got it wrong. This is the real 300. Uh, you remember the movie 300? You remember how the, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the Athenians fought uh, the Persians? Uh, the, yeah, this is the real 300. I, I want you to know how this battle was won because with God, a few will do. So now we're down to 300 men. Terry, me and you are getting ready to go into battle. It's 300. But my mind, I'm Gideon, I'm still thinking, uh, uh, 300, definitely too few. In God's mind, a few will do. God's thoughts, too many with 10,000. Gideon's thoughts, not enough with 10,000. So now we're down to 300. God has chosen those 300. And, and if you do the math, now Gideon and his 300 have to go and battle 135,000. 135,000. The math is one for 450. That means if I went to battle, I got to eliminate 450 men all by myself. All by myself. Now, if you've ever indulged yourself in the book of Samuel, or in First, uh, First Samuel or Second Chronicle, you will see about David's mighty warriors. David's mighty men. Now, if I had David's mighty men on my side, I would think in my mind, if I was Gideon, I probably can do it. These men were something, able to do amazing things. One man taking out 800 men. Another one taking out 300 men. One being able to swing a sword and just as proficient in his right as with his left, these were men who were skilled in battle. I would like to live during that time just to see it. Just to see it happen. Just to see bullies be brought down to nothing. Just to see the high-minded fall from great heights down to nothing because of mighty men. Now, I've been chosen. You've been chosen to be one of Gideon's 300. Can you stand? Can I stand? Can we stand against the world today? Can men who a few stand up for what is right and stand on the gospel of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Not be afraid. Not be fearful. But persevere. Show integrity. Show commitment. A character that is pleasing. A character that everybody wants to be connected with. Amen. A man that says yes and means yes. A man that says no and says no means no. A man of true character, a man of God. Can you and I be like Gideon? Can we stand with the 300? When things get tough, and they get tough, when danger is in front of us, 
when conflict is to the right of us, when there's chaos to the left of us, do we desert our post? Do we turn around and head back home because we've lost faith, we've lost confidence, we've lost trust in God and what he can do and who he is? Am I truly one of the 300? Can I be like one of the true 300? In a world that consists of a multitude of enemies. Can I still stand up for what is right? Can I still do what I know is the right thing to do? despite the odds that are against us. The army was 135,000, and now we have 300. But you know what? God, or rather Gideon, trusted in God. He had faith in God. He had confidence in God. He knew that the oppression, that persecution, Suffering the heartache and the heartbreak, the pain, the agony of living under uh, 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 the aggressiveness of the Midianites was now getting ready to stop. See, Gideon and the children of Israel can no longer blame what was happening to them on God. Because remember, Gideon tried it. When he said, God, what happened to all of these miracles when you took the children? So he tried to blame God. So, so no longer blaming God. This is getting ready to be over with. We now have come to the understanding that the reason why God can handle an army of the size of, of the Midianites with only 300 men is because now we put our trust and our faith in him and not in ourselves. That's what it is. I don't know what's going on in your life. I know what's going on in my life. And I know I've caused some bitterness in my life. I've caused pain in my life. I brought sorrow upon myself. Twenty nineteen is approaching. And I'm ready for some things to be done away with. I'm ready for some battles to be over with. I'm ready for some of the persecution. I'm ready for some of the shame. I, I, I'm ready for some of the, some of the ugliness in my life to go away. So the best way to do it is to let God fight the battle. So if you go on to read the story, if you look at uh, Smock, read uh, 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 Judges, the seventh chapter, verse number 22. Seventh chapter, verse number 22. So I want you to know what happened to the army. So they went to battle. They split up into three groups, and, and they each carried a, a, a trumpet, and, and they carried a pitcher in their hand. And, and, and when the trumpet was sounded, and, and the pitcher was thrown down and broken, uh, they held up a light and they sounded the trumpet and they confused the Midianites. D did you hear me? Hold the light up. Get rid of the things in your light that you don't need and hold up the light. And the light is Jesus the Christ. Put your faith and put your trust in Jesus. He'll battle for you. And so what happened, the, the Midianites were so confused that when they heard the trumpets being sounded, they began to attack. But the problem lied in the fact that they attacked each other. Did you hear that? They attacked each other because they didn't know which direction the 300 were coming from. Did you hear that? They didn't know which direction the 300 were coming from. Uh, Brother Smock, read that, Judges 2nd chapter, verse number 22. 
when they blew 300 trumpets. Uh-huh, they blew the trumpets. The Lord set the sword of one against another. There you go. Keep reading. Even throughout the whole army. Even throughout the whole army. They began to fight each other. God confused them. Man, you better let God fight your battles for you. I don't care how numerous the odds are. How insurmountable the odds are. God got your back. Look what God can do with a few. <laughs> and and, and, and Smith, that applies for the church. Jesus only had 12. 12. 12. A few can do so much. A few who have character. A few who can commit. A few who have integrity. A few that have confidence in God. A few that know how to complete a task. Don't stop in the middle of it. Throw your hands up. I'm talking about faithful men and women. I'm talking about the brethren and the sisters. I'm talking about the church of Christ. I'm talking about the body of Christ. I'm talking about the church that Jesus died for on the cross, the one that he's coming back for. I'm talking about men who will stand on the gospel, stand up for what's right. And matter of fact, you just don't stand up for it, stand on it and don't be moved. You know the song, I shall not be Move. Don't be moved. We're going into 2019. Some things need to be left behind. Some things need to be left for God to fight. And we just hold on to his hand and enjoy the ride. Does that mean that there won't be difficulties in your life? Absolutely not. God did not say that. God doesn't put the, so, so the, children of, uh, the, the children of Israel, and the suffering, uh, the persecution from the Midianites was because of them. But see, God knows how to use our disobedience for his advantage. Because remember, who's going to get the glory? God is going to get the glory. So when he mess, when we mess up, He's going to put us in position where we give him the glory. Because sometimes we mess up. I've messed up where there's nothing that I could do to get out of the situation. And I had to turn to the almighty God. And when I did that, I gave him all the glory. Because I couldn't do it. There's no way the children of Israel, 300, could have defeated an army of 135,000 without the help of God. Amen. No way. So when you're in those situations where it seems as though the odds are against you, understand the victory <laughs> is already won. Isn't that something? I, everybody just say it. The victory is already won. Say it. The victory is already won. It's already won. Just hang on to God's unchanging hand. You want to make some changes in 2019? We want things to be different in 2019? I just want you to know it's just another day. It really doesn't mean anything. You know, you know, but, but right, you know our New Year's resolution. It's just another day. You can make a change and a stand on any day of the year. It could start today. Today. Look what God can do with just a few. If you don't think that we can change the makeup of this community with this little bitty little church right here, then you lack faith. It, it, if you don't think 
You know how we are, but Proctor did. Sometimes we get into this idea that things, because of our minds, because of the way we think, that it, it's an impossibility. But if we look at the thoughts of God's thoughts and align our thoughts with his thoughts, there is no such thing as an impossibility. We can attack this community in a way that God receives the glory <laughs> and change everything about Lee Summit, Missouri. Or wherever you may live, whether you live in Raytown, Missouri, Overland Park, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri, Independence, Missouri, Belton, Peculiar, Pleasant Hill, it doesn't matter. We can take this greater metropolitan area, and I'm talking about Eastside Church of Christ. Remember, in Judges, the sixth chapter, verse number 35, he sent messengers to Manassas, to Asher, Zebulon, and Nephetali. For what reason? To help with the fight. We can do it. You know why? Because with God, a few will be. You heard the word of God on the day? Hopefully there's something that I've said with the use of the book, the chapter, and the verse to help inspire us. Love the Old Testament. Why? Paul said in Romans the 15th chapter, verse number 4, whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Might have hope. Hope in the Greek is elpish. E-L-P-I-S. Elpish. And it means that I have an expectation of something that is going to happen. Now, what better for way for us to know certain things is going to happen by just looking back in the Old Testament? Just looking, not just through the Old Testament, but at the Word of God all together to help us in our direction on a very difficult journey from earth to heaven. You've heard the Word of God on today. Maybe there's someone that needs to confess a fault, someone that needs to repent of a sin. We want to give you the opportunity to do that. Somebody that just needs prayer. Uh, somebody that has a testimony and wants to talk about how good God has been to them. Hey, you got an opportunity to be there. Do that. Maybe there's somebody that needs to put Christ on in baptism. You hear his word. You believe in his death, his burial, his resurrection. You confess the sweetest name that ever rolled off mortal tongue. And that is Jesus Christ. And I believe that he uh, uh, is the son of God. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. I believe he rose after being crucified three days later and sits on the right hand side of the father as I speak I believe in this I'm confessing that I want to be baptized I, I want to understand what baptism means I, I, I know what Peter said in uh, Acts the second chapter verse number 38 uh, that baptism not only is for re remission of my sin but baptism also gives me the Holy Spirit isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? See, we can't do this by ourselves. So God left us a comforter. According to John, the 16th chapter, verse number 14, he left us a comforter, someone who walks along with us and guides us. Someone who says, well, you probably don't want to do that. Someone who says, you make that left turn, but you know you need to make the right. Someone who gives you some guidance along the way. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Don't think that the Holy Spirit doesn't act in a certain way. Some people be the only way you can uh, have the Holy Spirit work with you is through the Bible. I believe the Holy Spirit speaks to us when there are times when we get ready to do something that aren't right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Holy Spirit trying to tell you what you're getting ready to do is not righteous. You get baptized and live faithfully until death according to Revelation 2 chapter. Whoa. Heaven, your home. Realize that you too could be your own. You too could be a Gideon. You too could be the chosen, the few, those amongst the 300. 
those who have that character, that perseverance, that, that persistence in doing God's word, those who stand on the truth, those who have uh, 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 in integrity, those who are committed to the battle, those who don't tremble, those who don't face, don't be afraid when danger is sparing them in the face, those that don't turn their back on conflict, but address it, deal with it, and move on. Yeah. Be one of those. I mean, it's good to have a dishonorable discharge in the army, in the military, or, 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 or honorable discharge. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's not good to have a discharge. Terry was shaking his head. Terry, I've been in the military for a long time. That's what you're talking about. <laughs> but Terry knows there are some honorable discharges that are just given just because they want you to go away. <laughs> Man, we don't need you no more. Bye. <laughs> so you know that happened. Uh, but just be a part of them. Be a part of those folks. Be someone that inspires others to do something different instead of disencouraging folks. You heard the word of God on today. Why don't we stand as we sing the Savior song of invitation? Number 819. 819. Glory, hallelujah, I shall not.